Ryan, great to have you on. I'm assuming maybe you're in your hotel room. So just curious because it's the topic of the week. How many hours of sleep did you get last night? And do you get on average this season since uh, one of your division rivals gets 14 <laughs> before his starts? <laughs> I saw that. That's wild. Uh, no, I, I usually stick to my my casual 8 to 10. Um, spent some time at the casino last night at Jack's. We're here in Cleveland. So slept in today and uh, woke up just in time to meet with you guys. Newsflash, Ryan's normal. 8 to 10 is normal. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I have one more for you before these guys jump in. So at one point, what was it, last week, you had a run where you hit the 5-for-5 five five game. Next day, be next game, you hit a home run. Does it get to a point as a hitter where you feel like it's a heat check, like Steph Curry just keeps backing up and shooting threes basically from half court until he misses? Do you feel that or do you feel like, damn, I want to keep this streak alive? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it a confidence thing or more like a, oh, don't change anything? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you just have that magic wand, you know. You just hit the ball. It's finding holes. Um, I was just trying to be aggressive. That day was, you know, that day was interesting because we had partied pretty hard the day before, clinching. And um, sometimes it just be that way. You know, I showed up and balls were finding holes. And then uh, the homer the next day was sick. Um, you know, I, I, I love to hit in Houston. So, um, yeah, solid series. Ryan, what's going on, man? Low K, what's up, man? Man, just hanging out, you know. Um, just quick question, man. Like, talk to me, man. What did anything change? I mean, you've been lighting it up, you've been swinging the bat really well. I mean, just just talk to me. What, what's going on with your swing right now? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, uh, the hitting coaches here, they got me right, man. They they got me right from the start. It was like, you know, we showed up, uh, they had a whole deal ready for me, um, as far as like you know, some changes that we wanted to make, and then um, you know, we got to work and then it was honestly, it was pretty like instant, uh, just the way that the ball was flying in batting practice. And that's when I realized like, okay, this is a little bit different than what I've been doing the last few years. Um, kind of always had a problem getting the ball with backspin in the air, pull side. Um, wasn't hitting breaking balls the way that I wanted to just kind of beating everything in the ground. I always hit the ball hard, but, uh, not at, you know, good launch angles or whatever. And then, um, so it was, it was a combination of that. And then, you know, just kind of learning stuff over the years, trying to take something from every hitting coach I had ever worked with. Um, and, it, you know, it just kind of clicked for me. And then uh, as the year went on, I start, you know, started getting more and more opportunities, getting more comfortable. Um, and, uh, yeah, things kind of took off, man. It's, it's been such a blessing. The Where I'm at now compared to this year last time is just couldn't be more night and day. It's, you know, it's been awesome. So it started in spring training, these, these adjustments that they made. Why did you go to AAA? Were you pissed? You're like, dude, yeah, look at how I'm absolutely mashing the ball. Yeah, we also had a guy named Franchi Cordero hit like 600 in, in spring training. And, That's you what know, he does. Unfortunately, <laughs> his spring training numbers don't mean, you know, everything. But, um, yeah, obviously I was pissed. I, you know, I didn't want to go back to AAA. I spent plenty of time in AAA. And um, I've always had good numbers in AAA. And, um, you know, I wanted to be in the big leagues, obviously. So it was a short uh, two-week trip down in Norfolk and uh you know honestly wasn't wasn't too bad at all Ryan it was nice seeing you last night uh in, in Cleveland um I don't think we got to talk but it was great it was great seeing you anyways I, at least I got to talk to Hicks you know he, he didn't blow me off when you walked right past me it's cool though <laughs> oh, oh that's, that's not true at all man that's not true <laughs> I walked right past me whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> oh, oh it was unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> that you didn't happen guy? Oh, right, right past me, right here. Boop. I was standing there uh, talking to Hicks right between us. Boop. <laughs> Absolutely okay. not. No chance. No chance. <laughs> no, but, uh, How you doing, man? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, <laughs> on a serious note, I was talking to Brandon Hyde last night. We go in and we do these games and get to talk to the managers. And you were a big topic of conversation because obviously you were in AAA to start the year. You're claimed off waivers from the Royals. You come over. You don't make the team out of spring training. And we said, well, what, you know, what did O'Hearn change? And he said, he kind of went through what you just said. He made some adjustments in the swing. And I said, well, how did he earn the time? And he goes, well, I put him in there. He got a hit. And then we're like, well, he earned another start. And then he got two hits. And then we're like, oh, well, I can't really take him out of the lineup. He got two more hits. And now you're yeah. hitting fourth for a team that's probably going to win the AL East. Walk us through the mindset of Norfolk to now hitting cleanup for one of the best teams, the best team in the American League. Yeah, insane. Um but I'll tell you what, at the same time, like, I always believed that I could do it. 
it was never a question of whether I thought I could do it or not. It's like, I know I can do it. I've, um, have, I've in brief stints had success in this league before. And uh, Locaine knows what it's like hitting at the K in Coffin Stadium. It's, it's not fun. And, you know, you couple that with the, uh, the shift stuff and all that. And I just felt like I could never, like, get out of, the, you know, get my head above water there. Um, and it was like, you know, you don't get a couple of hits. You sit the bench for a week, that kind of deal. When I got here, it was like, all right, I, I love hitting at Camden. Um, I got these new swing changes going on. I feel good. There's no more shift. And then I just started getting hits, you know, and then like things just kind of started snowballing. And, um, you know, I've got more confidence now in the box and obviously than I've ever had. And you, you guys know what it's like when you, you know, you never really have success in the big leagues is you're just kind of finding your way. And then once you do have it, you kind of, you know, loosen up a little bit, feel like you can be yourself more, feel like you can actually just, you know, let it eat up there. Like it's another day and you're not, you know, scratching and clawing just to get back in the lineup. Um, and, you know, that's just kind of how it happened. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a whirlwind. It's been a, a big change. Um, and it's been beautiful, man. It's, it's been awesome. So you you mentioned confidence and, like, I know I can do it, all that stuff. Did you know you were going to get all those hits, though, and you were banged up? Were you sitting there going, eh, we partied a little bit too hard tonight. I hope that <laughs> put me in the lineup. Did Hyde come to you before? The uh, celebration, or did they cut? Did he come to you during the celebration? He was like, "Hey, Ernie, you're still in there." <laughs> well, we, Mountie's got the shoulder thing going on, so uh, somebody's got to play first base. <laughs> uh, but if you know, if you uh, if you were to follow me throughout my uh, minor league career, I was I was pretty good at, at uh, playing hungover back then. Not so much anymore, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, for. You know, if there was ever a time to play a hungover and celebrating uh, uh, making the playoffs is, is a good time to do it. Oh, hell yeah. You guys deserve that. So with that, on the individual side of things, do you want to state the case for the AL Manager of the Year and who the AL Rookie of the Year should be, in your opinion? Yeah, for me, it's a no-brainer. I think we got Brandon Hyde, Manager of the Year. Um, you know, he's so he's such a... He does such a good job of getting the best out of you. You know, he uh, reads players really well. He knows kind of when to leave you alone, when to, um, you know, when to say something to you. Um, you know, just just ultimate leader, man. He's, you know, always seems to have the right thing to say to the guys um, and uh, keeps it loose and fun when it should be. And then, you know, when it's time to get down to business, you know, he's, he's good at that too. So, um, you know, I, I think Brandon High is definitely a manager of the year. Um, and for me, and then obviously, you know, we got a young guy named Gunnar Henderson trying to win rookie of the year. And if you look at what that guy's done this year on both sides of the ball, uh, you know, the way he's hit, uh, the way he's played defense at shortstop and third base, um, you know, the guy's just incredible. And, uh, to have such a young player with that kind of, that kind of moxie, that kind of aura about him where, you know, he's not scared. He's, uh, just got this like silent confidence going on, I think is such a rare, thing for, for a young guy sometimes I forget that he's like what 22 years old you know just because the way that he plays and the confidence that he brings but um you know I'm pulling for both those guys to win those awards I think they're very deserving yeah you just want Brandon Hyde because he's playing you that's why and Gunnar Henderson absolutely he plays a shortstop right brown noser <laughs> yeah it's, I mean, right, it's amazing wrong, you know one. big league me brown nose Brandon Hyde I get it that's yeah. how you get in the lineup it's perfect <laughs> he's, he's changed he's changed <laughs> from the royal days on, no? that's right Right. I, bet, I bet when he had Brian Buchanan in Omaha as his hitting coach, he wasn't clamoring for him hitting coach oh, of the year. That is, that's also <laughs> not true. I love Buck, man. Love that guy. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Brandon Hyde, obviously doing the game last night, we, we, you, you find out so much about the team. But have you gotten Brandon Hyde to drink out of the Homer hose yet? Did he drink uh, out of the yeah, celebration? Yeah, he did a, he did a Homer hose uh, during the celebration along with – Mike Elias and John Angelos, our owner. We had everybody. everybody awesome. Over. Awesome. Yeah. And then whose idea was it? Was it Herstad who you guys stuck in the cart and dumped all the crap on him? Who's yeah, he was. How, how did he get stuck being the bad guy? Because you guys ran out of beer, right? Well, I just think he, we ran out of beer, and I think he was just the – I don't even know if he had a, a trip in the, in the basket yet. So I just think it was, it was his time to get that trip in the basket. And uh, no beer, so, you know, we got olive oil, ketchup, mustard, you name it. Uh, <laughs> And he just had to wear that one. Who gets in trouble for that? Somebody's got to take a hit, kangaroo court or something. Run out of beer? 
for the celebration? Usually there's so much left when I've been in oh, those had, clubhouses. What happened? It was probably like a 15-minute uh, intermission, and then we had some reinforcements coming in. I don't know mm. I don't know if they ran to CVS or whatever or, or gas mm. station, but, uh, you know, we got some – uh, when's the last time you bought beer from CVS? But. <laughs> 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 you eventually got some reinforcements. Supply chain issues all, all across oh. the country. Hey, question for you, because you faced him for a while with KC. So we're going to get to this later, but they've been doing the gifts for Miggy across um, the ballparks because he's, he's yeah. leaving. So the Oakland A's gave him an $80 <laughs> bottle of wine. Um, yeah. Compared to, you know, like the Dodgers giving him a Hollywood star. And you saw, I mean, some of the other teams putting thousands of dollars together. Oh, we have the video. Amazing. Like, <laughs> speaking of speaking of your local drugstore, they were like, shit, guys, <laughs> uh, is coming and nobody works here. And the owner won't pay for anything. Does anyone have 80 bucks? Okay, here. Your thoughts. Uh, maybe, I mean, it's close to Napa. Maybe they could sell it off that way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, that's a no comment for me. I saw that this morning. Uh, also, I know we gave him a brick. So, I mean, I know it's from the classic warehouse, but um, I don't know. True, true. Well, okay. If you're on, if no, you're interesting on the floor, gift. No, it's a, it, there's more creativity to that, though. Definitely more say, creativity. Yes. Than grabbing a bottle of wine. Um, if you were on a tour um, for the end of your career, what would you want? Like, what's something that you love that you either have, like, at the house or that do you collect anything? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the, the only thing I've been collecting lately is, uh, like, you know, guys who are, you know, kind of later on in their career who I've always looked up to and respected, just trying to get their, you know, them sign a jersey for me. Uh, I got Vado this year. I got um, Evan Longoria. Uh, I got Miggy last year, Granky, just some guys like that. That's kind of been my only thing. You know, eventually one day I want to, um, when I get a bigger house, you know, have a room with some jerseys of guys that I, you know, respected and played against throughout my career. But um, other than that, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of anything. Maybe some golf, new golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it in dingers and you're going to have a huge house for all those <laughs> Tell them. Who, who has said no? Have you, have you like, have you played against somebody and been like, oh, dude, like went into the Dodgers and hey, I want this guy's jersey. And I was like, no shot. <laughs> no, everyone's been pretty, uh, pretty gracious. But I make sure, I make sure to see him, you know, at first base or, or something before the game and say, hey, man, you know, I love watching you play. Like, you think you'd sign a jersey for me? I'm not, just, you know, ambushing guys saying, hey, can you send over a jersey to so-and-so? But uh, everybody's been been pretty cool. Hey, Ryan, I got one more. So you mentioned how the Orioles had a plan for you right off the jump, and change of scenery can be a big positive in the game. We see that work with a lot of players getting different insight and also just getting to, you know, show off their skills for a different ball club and fit in that way. So with that being said, Baltimore's had a ton of success. KC's in their rebuild right now. If I called you and I'm on the front office – of the KC Royals, and I go, hey, dude, like, that team's crushing it. How do we get there? What would be one thing that you would tell them? Like, what do you observe there that Baltimore's doing winning culture-wise? It can be something super small, like, hey, we hit one team dinner a week, or, or it can be something like big picture. Hey, they've got this behind the scenes that really makes a difference. Yeah, it's a tough question. Um, I mean, it, I think it helps that, you know, what they're doing in Kansas city, I think they, they are on the way. Um, you know, one thing that Baltimore has had, in my opinion, is just like solid starting pitching, honestly, like, um, you know, Kansas city's on the way. They got a lot of young guys that are kind of coming into their own. Um, when I was in Toronto, Buck Martinez asked me to choose between, uh, cause I played with Bobby Witt. He's like, can you choose between Bobby Witt and Gunnar Henderson if you had to? And I was like, absolutely not. There's no way. Uh, you know, these guys are both incredible. So I think, you know, as, as the years go on and they continue to add pieces, they'll, they're going to be just fine. Um, but it, you know, it takes time and it, it takes, you know, experience and, and winning. And I, you know, I, it makes me think of the Orioles a couple of years ago, playing at Camden a couple of years ago was like the most low stress environment as a visiting team that you could play in. It was like, nobody was in the stands. Team wasn't good. Um, you know, you come in, a, but 
you would come into Baltimore and looking to get, you know, a couple hits a game and, and kind of get those numbers up. But it's like things happen quick and, and it's amazing how fast it's changed in Baltimore. Um, just by adding some pieces and, and um, you know, and, and, you know, getting the right veterans surrounding a young core and then all of a sudden the, you know, the culture changes and then, you know, you start piling up the wins and everything can change real quick. So, um, you know, I think that's, you know, that's the direction Kansas City's headed. And, um, you know, I, I love all the people over there. I wish nothing but the best for them, you know. All right. So you didn't want to choose between Wit and Gunner. You got to choose now. Like this is we're not we're not playing both sides of the fence here. Salvi and Adley. Who has more? Come on. Um, who has more? World <laughs> I choose Eric Kratz. No, you can't choose, yes, you can't choose them. Yes. Nope. Who has more World <laughs> Series championships at the end of their career? Salvador Perez or Adley Rushman? Well, uh, I would hope to be in Baltimore for a while, and I hope it's Adley Rushman. Boom. There you go. I'll Great tell Salvi. Teammate. I'm texting That's gotta right be. now. But I love Salvi. Nope, nope, nope. You hate Salvi. <laughs> Locaine heard it too. <laughs> He's Come Locaine on now. Salvi, <laughs> you know <laughs> that. I never <laughs> let Ryan hurt anywhere. I never, I never say his name. I never say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, Ryan, great to great to have you on, man. Uh, appreciate it. We've been wanting to have you. Um, enjoy the combo. Keep crushing. Have a big big final week here. Go take that division, and uh, we'll watch you in the postseason. Right? Uh, by the way, wait, wait. Before yes. we let him go, Locaine picked the Rays. I knew you were going to do that. Locaine picked the oh, Rays to catch you. Okay. Oh, oh, he did. I apologize. He did. He, he, did. he picked the Rays. I apologize, Ryan. Ryan. Listen. So let, let me let me defend myself. What's up okay? with that? I apologize, Ryan. You know, <laughs> you, hey, you guys have a great selfless group, but. Those rays, man. It's something about those rays oh, that do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. All right, we're gonna see. Hey, I yeah. want to ask you about that bump, man, real quick. Hey, you guys like are so that? selfless. Hey, great bump, by the way. Have you ever? I've never seen you bump before. before you start. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was man. That was my first uh, major league sack bunt. and oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was I was fired up in the moment, you know, and Hyder's like, hey, I got a tough assignment for you. Can you get this bump down? And we got Deekman going. I'm like, hell yeah, let's get it down. Um, you know, I just try to stick my face in there and, and you know, do whatever I could do to get it down. But I'm just, you know, I'm glad we got that thing down. You did it. Well, go win that division. Shove it to low. Then he'll apologize in a week. <laughs> Ryan, it's great to talk to you, dude. Good luck hey, this weekend. Hey, and you can hey thanks for having me Saturday. on, guys. You can big league me <laughs> next too. Saturday again in Baltimore. <laughs> I'm be looking for you, AJ. I, did, I promise you I did not see you. I would not big league you. AJ, you're a punk. We'll be right back. <laughs>